Hi, so in this video, I wanted to talk about the concept of modular arithmetic. So modular arithmetic, which is an idea that, that comes up often in discrete mathematics and in computer science. Uh, in particular, it also comes up in the area of cryptography. And I thought I would do some follow-on videos on specific topics in cryptography. And in order to do this, I thought it would be useful to introduce how modular arithmetic works. Now, sometimes what you might see is you might see something of the form, you know, what is uh, 14 mod 12? And you often see this term mod used in different places. And all mod basically means is um, to take the remainder if this value uh, was divided into this value. So in other words, what will be the remainder when 14 is divided by 12? And that, that's what mod means. That's all it really means. Uh, another way to think about mod is it's like what would happen if you kept subtracting 12 from 14 until you got to a number between uh, 0 and 11, which I know sounds kind of confusing, but you know, bear with me and it'll make sense in a while. And yet a third way to think about doing modular arithmetic is basically, and I think this is one of the most intuitive ways to think about it, is it's basically what would happen if you kind of cycled back and you only considered the numbers from 0 to 11, and when you got to 12, you cycled back to 0. Now, the reason I say this might be more intuitive is that when you think about it, if you've got a clock, um, you know, in, in a clock, you basically are performing modular arithmetic all the time. So let's see the numbers in the clock, and uh, I'm just going to kind of draw out some of the numbers here. What, what typically happens when you, when you have a clock is that you often have to perform modular arithmetic to figure out um, or convert between regular time and military time. So for example, if somebody told you, hey, it is um, 1,400 hours, you would know that 1,400 hours uh, is actually the same as 2 o'clock p.m., right? Uh, 1,500 hours is the same as 3 o'clock p.m., etc. And the reason you know that is, is all you're basically doing is effectively subtracting 12. So when you have the number 14 on a 12-hour clock, you go back to 12, and then you go to, this would be 13, uh, and this would be 14. So you'd basically be cycling back, and, and this, in fact, would be 15, which is 3 o'clock, and, and, and so on and so forth. And that's kind of how you can think about uh, modular arithmetic, um, uh, especially when you're doing mod 12, because it's much more intuitive than uh, than other numbers, but it's something that you're very used to doing. Another way to think about it is when you want to do 14 mod 12, and I said that you can also think about the remainder. So, um, you know, what is a remainder when you uh, divide 12 into 14? And so uh, you have, you know, 12, and you have 2 left over, and since 2 is smaller than 12, you get 1 remainder 2, so that's another way to think about it. So you got the number 2 here. You also got the number 2 um, here by just thinking of everything as a clock. Um, and yet a third way, as I mentioned, to think about modular arithmetic is that it's basically like subtracting 12 or subtracting the modulus um, until you end up with a number between 0 and the modulus minus 1. So for example, if I had 14 and I subtracted what is 14 minus 12, and that would immediately give me 2. And so it's done another way, and then you can see these, these answers all coincide. So this is 2, and, and this is 2, and this is 2. All these different ways that I've shown you of arriving at the answer, they're all mathematically equivalent, and they're a useful way to think about uh, doing modular arithmetic. Uh, so let's, let's do another really simple problem. What if I said, what is um, 8 plus 6 mod 12? Well, you'd say, well, 8 plus 6, that's just 14. And we know that 14 mod 12 well, that's just equal to 2 because we just worked that out earlier. So when, when you uh, take the remainder of uh, 14 divided by 12, you do get 2. Okay? Now, there's some cute facts to know about modular arithmetic. And one of the, the most interesting facts about doing modular arithmetic is it basically uh, preserves the properties of regular arithmetic. So, for example, if suppose I had uh, two numbers, the A and B. So if I had A mod P and B mod P, and I can do um, a plus b mod p um, would actually be, uh, you, you, you could get that by doing, effectively taking a mod p plus b mod p and then doing that mod p. Now this, this might already sound really bizarre. Um, and uh, let me actually give you an example. Suppose I had uh, 17, okay, and uh, let's say mod, and I'm going to make it, uh, let's say, I don't know, how about 13, okay, um, 
and I had, let's say, 15 mod 13. So when we know 17 mod 13, it's the same as, in this case, 17 minus 13, which is 4. So if you went on a 13-hour clock, you'd end up at 4 um, if you cycled back. And, and uh, 15 mod 13 would be equal to 2. And now let's think about that. What is 17 plus 15 mod 13? Well, that's the same as saying 32 mod 13. Okay, so what is the remainder when 32 is divided uh, by 13? So if we had a, I'm gonna draw it out here, so we had to say 32 and we're dividing that by uh, 13. Well, you can do two, you get uh, 26, uh, you get a six left, and so you get two remainder six. So the answer is six, okay? And what you'll also notice is, in fact, um, that's the same as doing uh, 17 mod 13 plus 15 mod 13. If you add these two numbers together, 4 plus 2, you get, you also get 6. And so, um, in one way, I basically added the numbers and then performed the modular operation and found the remainder. The other way, I basically performed the mods and then added afterwards. And in both cases, I ended up with the same value. Okay, so it's actually a very convenient win, and so we, we often talk about doing arithmetic mod a certain number, and the notation that, that's typically used to describe that is notation that's called uh, Z um, mod N, or Z mod, in this case, Z mod P, or, or whatever you want to call it, and, and this basically says, Z is basically a symbol that's used to represent the integers, or, or the whole numbers, like, you know, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., um, and when you see the little p back here, that just basically means that all the arithmetic that you would do, you would basically do as if you were talking about a p hour clock, or you would do everything mod p, and go back to zero as soon as you got to p. And so any anything in, in z mod p, the numbers in z mod p, really correspond to zero, one up until uh, p minus one, because as soon as you got to p, you would just get you to go back to zero. You would never consider p. Okay. Hopefully that makes some sense. Um, and what I will do is I will stop right here, uh, and um, I, I want to make one actually one note before I stop, which is that in much the same way that addition is preserved under this modular operation, you can also realize that things like like multiplication and subtraction are also preserved uh, in the modular operation. Uh, and the last point I do want to make is is that another way to think about modular arithmetic is you can also talk about modular arithmetic with negative numbers too. And and if you're dealing with negative numbers, it can be kind of confusing to talk about division and remainders. The way I like to think about it is, is instead of um, instead of subtracting 12, you would you would add 12 to what you have, or you would, instead of subtracting the modulus, you would add the modulus to what you have. So for example, um, negative 1 mod 12, uh, that's basically just going to be equal to 11. Because if you think about it, what is negative 1 plus 12? Uh, negative 1 uh, plus 12 uh, is the same as 11. And, if, and you can figure that out by, by looking at the number line. Uh, and if you had the number uh, 12 here, and you were asked to add minus 1 to 12, you actually go backwards by 1, and you'd end up at 11. Uh, and and um, and so really, when we talk about modular arithmetic, all, all you have to do is basically to compute the modulus. You know, you can do many different things, but one way to do it is by adding or subtracting the modulus enough times until you end up with a number between 0 and the modulus minus 1. Uh, and the reason it's got to be between 0 and the modulus minus 1 is if the modulus is 12, um, 12 it kind of goes back to zero, right? So you're, you're never going to actually end up at 12. You'll always end up at a number between zero and 11. Okay, hopefully that made some sense. And I will stop this video here, and I'll, I'll look forward to some, doing some future videos on different areas, and, and in particular, I'll look to do some videos on cryptography. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you hopefully in the next video.